Friday. Yep. A fan on Sunday mornings usually goes one to the trees. <laughs> Good evening. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are gathered today in the sight of God as one within the body of Christ for a time of prayer and reflection and mutual consolation as we warmly remember and celebrate the life of Mark. Hear the promise of Christ our Lord. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the days of earthly life that you granted to Mark, for the grace you bestowed in Christ Jesus, for his birth into a living hope through the water and the word of holy baptism, and for all the good he was permitted to give and to receive. We now entrust Mark into your loving arms and pray for the sustaining comfort of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. And from Psalm 121, I lift mine eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. And a reading from St. John. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I now invite you into a time of sharing time of <coughs> conversation celebrating the life of Mark. A sharing of stories and memories is important and a gift from God. A gift that helps us deal with the reality of life and the certainty that God has painted a truly wonderful and glorious picture of Mark on our hearts and in our minds forever. Now it's up to you guys. <coughs> say something first. I'm an older sister of Mark's, 13 years older and stuff, and uh, so I knew him as a baby. A lot of the stuff, we kind of were babysitters. My older sister and I, was, this was down in Larimer, North Dakota, and uh, one story, I, I, when he was little, I don't know, maybe two or so, his only thing I remember, he would sit in an old rocking chair that was Grandma Scordell's that Mom had down there. Because Grandma Scordell lived with us in the winter always down there. And he would sit and rock forever in that rocking chair. Hours, he'd sit, just happy as could be, just rocking there. And uh, of course we babysat and stuff. And they moved up here then when, uh, well, in what, 60 we decided, was that right? 60. Fall of 60 and stuff. And I was married at the time, and I had a little girl, and I remember being pregnant with her, my, our son and stuff. And uh, I knew they had left, and I, the story then went on. I don't know how they all moved to mom and the kids. And our, my dad then, our dad, Wesley Strongsville, he, I know he drove, I believe it was, he drove the combine up, I think it was. I rode it all the way up the stuff back in, I don't know, the fall of it, 1960, I think. And we'd come up and visit a lot when George was in Vietnam. I was here one summer, and we had tried, came a lot, tried to be, you know, at least once a year. And 
stuff. And uh, I was just here visiting with, the, uh, in October, September, so Mark for a short time, that my husband just passed away from seven months ago. So, uh, but I, Mark, when he was a little baby, and he used to have a whole lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone send me a message that I was supposed to share. So, Kevin BC has ridden our horses uh, for years, trained them, and um, shown them, and been a good friend of ours uh, as well as a trainer. And he was not able to make it. But he had three stories he wanted to share. For 20 plus years, you can still find any rainer, as in horse rainer, in North Dakota. And if you bring up the North Dakota State Fair, there's only one consistent story. And it would be, remember when we'd show at midnight, which we often did because the rainers were at the end, for so many years. And Mark would grill hamburgers for us at his trailer for hours. He always had a big smile and a laugh that you could hear for 10 trailers away. And then the second story is every time I entered a show arena with any horse, didn't matter if it was Mark's horse or somebody else's, somewhere along the trot in or the first loping circle, which I realize a lot of you haven't watched this, but um, I hear, go, Cammy! I loved it because it calmed me down, helped me focus, and gave me confidence. But when I came in on Fred, which was our stallion that he was campaigning for the world show, it was a bit different. If my ride was going good, Mark would start to hoover out of his chair, <laughs> like this, and I could hear his heart pounding. And Kevin has said this for years. I, there wouldn't be anybody else in the stands, but he just thump, 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 and it was Mark Sartani. He would get so excited that his cheers would get higher pitched and more frequent. And then it came to the cow work, and wow, if you wanted to see a grown man act like a three-year-old toddler, that was Mark. He'd be standing, sitting, steering thread, whooping, smiling, and smiling huge the whole time. And then me, Fred, and Mark would leave the arena winded and happy, whether the ride was good or not. Last of all, he had always been a good friend for me, and I'm going to mark, miss hearing Kevin. For 30 years, I never heard the end in Kevin. It was always Kevin. Clinics, phone calls, horse shows, or general visits, I love to hear Kevin. I miss you, Mark, and I'm still going to need you in the stands. Love you. Where does he get Anderson? Ag Baldwin, just north of this. Oh, okay. And he would have been here today, but he's putting on. So, I knew him in a different way. No more I never <laughs> But I first mark, met, met Mark when I started eating at your restaurant, okay? Um, I know a lot of you guys don't know me, but I'm one of the most finicky, picky eaters. <laughs> Working in law enforcement, it's very rare that we get a hot, decent, good meal. Can't tell you how many times that I stopped there right before the place was about to close, and there was always time to make one more meal. Didn't matter. Go out to eat on the rare day that I'd actually have some time off. Most of the time it was usually when I was on duty. And man, I wanted some shrimp. I wanted that beer battered shrimp. And he would get up from the table that he was sitting down, ready to eat his meal, and I'd watch him take those shrimp all the way down to the bottom of the bucket, <laughs> stir it around, and pull it out, and he'd hold it up. Is this good? <laughs> yep. <laughs> what really sucks about death is that you learn about a person, their life. I come here, I read this memorial card, I see the family, I see the friends, I hear the stories, and I feel such a great sense of loss because I know Mark is the hardworking man in the kitchen preparing the meals, meals for me to sustain me to do my job when realizing there was so much more to this man. You know, I walked up here, which you Chad, because I couldn't even walk up here myself. 
I know a lot of us have recently lost people and loved ones, and I, I did myself. Thank you again, Pastor Todd, being there for me today. But to come here and to see the presentation, to see how beautiful he looks. He's a very handsome man in death, just as he was in life. And I look at the photos in here, and I read his story, and I feel such a sense of loss that I didn't know him more than the man I knew. So, although I can't be there tomorrow, it, it, it gives me a lot of happiness to be here to see the love that you guys all had for him. And he'll never be forgotten. It, it, it doesn't matter. There is no restaurant or place I could go eat that will ever rival the meals that this man made for me. I just hope that he passed along his secrets to the other people who are going to be Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you will know. You will know. I know. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'm glad that we were able to come together in spite of the, the sickness that is going around to be able to celebrate the life of Mark. Because the one thing I did realize with the passing of my own dad and not being able to have a celebration of his life and a memorial for him the sense of loss doesn't seem to go away. And I know that this is not going to change things to make things better, but it'll give you guys the opportunity to actually get your feelings out and have a sense of family and camaraderie. And even though tomorrow is going to be a service, that's not the end of Mark. Mark is going to be enjoying everlasting life with our Lord, but also through all of the memories that you guys have of him, and that's what continue to share. Um, I was speaking to someone earlier today about the recent loss of one of their parents, and I said, just because they're gone, don't stop saying their name. They're always going to be there. You're going to look in the mirror, you're going to see their smile. You're going to remember a song that they sang, and it's going to make you smile. Take the good out of this tragedy. Although this wasn't a planned event, when is it ever? But take the best we can and move forward. I'll miss you, Mark. easy as I thought, but anyway, I'm Paul Carlson, and I worked with him down at the Lansford Post Office here the last couple of years, and <laughs> there's a lot of stories I think we could tell, <laughs> but you know, they always say he came from the Paragon in the morning, eating breakfast, you know, I thought, man, <laughs> early risers, they like to get up early, whatever, but uh, our postmaster down there is Deb. As yeah, I can never pronounce her name, but anyway, she liked to take her smoke breaks and go out the back door, and he would always give her grief, he would, gotta give up those dang cigarettes, gotta give up those dang cigarettes, you know, she, you know, we tried to, you know, have it instill it in her, but she's still smoking, whatever, but, but and the other thing I remember about Horseman, you know, he was a Guthrie, Oklahoma or Guthrie, Texas? Guthrie, Texas. Okay, and he said, ah, we're going, going down there, look at the horse sale stuff. You know, always talked about horses and stuff, and that man, he'd take out, I don't know, it was a week or something, or 10 days, whatever, you know, that lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> now here I am working at the post line, and he gets to see the country, or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, and it's such small, dinky little towns. Well, it's about the size of Fort Fire now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what he would say. Uh, I guess the, the funniest story I have, the latest one was, <laughs> he drove these Toyota, what, Highlanders? And he had trouble with this one, as, as a mailman, you have tire troubles. But he had this one tire, and I swear, there were three times it went flat on him, and he got it fixed. The fourth time was finally the charm. He sent me a picture, stupid plier handles got into the sidewall, <laughs> and that took care of it, you know? So I was glad I wasn't the only guy that had tire troubles. I, he had major ones, and he kept, I thought, just, you know, throw that tire away and get a new one. He we, did. Yeah, <laughs> finally. <laughs> anyway, that's quite, quite the guy. Uh, he I miss him really a lot, well. so. A good friend and a good co-worker, so. Yeah, thank you, Paul. He enjoyed working with you very much.
Barb began as a very good horseman when we were in grade school and early high school. Uh, we always got Harry Lois to bring a uh, Shetland pony for the summer out to us. And Mark was the one, Lauren and I, we, well, it's okay, but Mark was the one I need to be the take care of this horse. And uh, this one year we got the horse at Shetland Pony, and Lauren and I could ride it, but that horse just recognized something that it did not like Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark was so mad, we get so mad at it because when he tried to get on it, it would turn and try to bite him in the behind <laughs> and buck and everything. And um, I always, you know, kind of thought, this is kind of odd. You're the one that wants to ride the horse and be the horseman, and you've got a horse. Or Shetland, I guess maybe they're not a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be me. Yeah, but he always um, wanted that horse to like him and give him rides and everything, and that horse just did not care for him at all. <laughs> and then uh, my oldest sister, or our oldest sister, Shirley, called. And uh, I, I really don't know if she's got her people mixed up between me and Mark. Yeah. But she said, Mark never crawled. He sat on one leg and kind of scooted himself around uh, that way. But um, I'm thinking, I told, called her back and I said, Shirley, I, are you sure it's Mark or are you thinking of me? Yes. Because I had the scar on my leg for many years yeah. where I crawled on my leg and that calf and everything was all bigger and bruised up. So I think she's thinking more of me. But but she said Mark was the one that did the I know he always said that you guys gave him a hard time because he'd sleep with his butt in the air. So he had slept with his yeah. butt in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I thought you said, you know, with being older, I was 13 years older, my husband and another year older, but we'd come up a lot, we were very young and stuff, and there were, my husband was a good horse rider and stuff, but he was stopping in the Shetland pony, they're not very big a lot of the time, and he could just sit on it, I mean, it could, you know, he could stay on it when he tried to lock them off, he'd put his legs on her and everything, but yeah, I guess Mark, but the story to begin with about the horses and stuff, our dad did not like horses. Uh, in growing up in North Dakota, I can remember we had a team of horses they had in the winter. Took us out by a, a snow, stone boat type thing and an enclosed thing to school, to the country schools in the cold winters and stuff. But uh, our uncle, uh, dad's brother uh, Wallace from the Lemur, he, he was a horseman and stuff. So I don't know if that's where some of Mark come down with that, you know, and stuff. But uh, yeah, our dad, he never let us have horses or ponies or anything and stuff that when we were growing up the same I think then when you all moved up here and stuff. But. Some of you that may have known uh, Denny Ost or may know Denny Osbury, he had a, yeah. a team of Belgians and they came from Buffalo uh -huh. Wallace. Yeah. I think he had them up here in a parade once. Uh -huh. so. You were talking about him sleeping with his son when he was a kid. These two did the same thing. <laughs> and I used to stand over and say, that's how I always slept. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could sit and think, close my eyes, and I could just see Mark. I don't know how, you know, rocket. He, maybe he was two, one and a half or two or so. He had to climb up into that rocking chair. And he'd sit there and rock and rock. Some of the messages we've been getting on Facebook and texts and messages and all that. I've been hearing from people that I had no idea that had had any contact with Mark. And they, the recurring theme is um, Mark meant so much to my kids because we'd come out and we'd have lunch. And Mark would come into the dining area 
and he'd see that there was a kid at the table, and he'd say, you done with your soup? Let's go. And he'd load him up in the ranger, and they'd go down to the barn, or they'd go out to the pasture, and go look at the, the foals, or, you know, whatever. And um, I, we've, we've heard a lot of, a lot of how, uh, how much he loved sharing that with, with not only the youth, but the adults, but he, uh, he really loved, he loved kids and he loved being able to show him, them the animals and, and all that kind of thing. So. I know it wasn't too many years ago when Tom and George and I were up here and he and Mark took off and Mark and Sony too, I know they have some of their antiques and stuff in the house and out and everything with my husband the same way, so am I. We have, and they had gone, Mark knew of places out in the country and uh, uh, parts for, for uh, horse team, you know, and stuff, old things like that and stuff. I mean, can't remember what they're called. Uh, mm -hmm. The front thing and the, the, yes. the levelers or something Levelers, like yes. Yeah. 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 And Mark had found yes. some for George and we took home to Missis Michigan then, is probably where we were living, or Mississippi maybe. Yeah. I don't remember because we've been there now. But they got the take off for the day and they wouldn't come around again. <laughs> you know. Even when I was working with the youth group, and he failed and I probably remember, he was always happy to take them for a hay ride or a sleigh ride or something. All go out to the farm and pray them off. Yeah, he loved kids. When I got pregnant with Cam, I think I offended Sony. I remember sitting at the kitchen table. Yep. I need babies here. Bring them out. Spark, you can watch them. Sony was like, um. <laughs>
we even talked about days like today. And um, I mean, I will cherish those conversations that we had out in the cook shack. And I'll just, like I said, cherish them for my entire life. And his um, brotherly, older brother wisdom, and his two-stepping, and that deep, hearty giggle. He must say, our dad was a good two-stepper. I mean, he taught me how to live to the, one of the dances years ago when I was here, uh, they used to have it, they had a dance of some sort at the schoolhouse that used to sit from Grandma Spardals and Mark's place there Brandon at the, home. At the home. corner. Brandon Hall. Brandon Hall, right? And I, I was, I don't know if George was maybe in Vietnam then or what, it seems to me I was here by myself, I don't know. But uh, they taught that Dad could do the two, and the, the one now, Red Wing music, song and music, old song, old song. Anyway, Dad, they play that, and Dad, two step mm -hmm. up to that with the two. Well, one more thing, Mark, is you will be missed, but we will yeah. never forget you. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of my favorite memories with Mark and the horses was, uh, it was one of the Elsco reunions. And there was a Hirsch, Sherwood Hirsch show the next day or something. And um, they were having fireworks at Mohawk. And we took the, the trailer up, picked up all three of the brats, and loaded them in the, loaded them in the, <laughs> loaded them in the horse trailer. And I don't know where we put everybody, but we had all three of you. And um, we sat in Sherwood and watched the Mohawk fireworks. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then we watched fireflies. You know uh -huh. Yeah, we parked on that Francis's. No. We no. Were no. The, we were all there. We were all there. We were all there. I thought yeah. we were at the arena. We were at the arena. Yeah. 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 I remember thinking that, wasn't that too you guys were crazy. No, no. I, Mark, Mark was crazy. I wasn't sure it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too long after you got the trip. Probably. Yeah. No, Mark, there was nothing that made him happier than taking the kids some, somewhere that had something to do with horses. And um, when that set of brats grew up, he was pretty tickled that this set of brats was coming yeah. along. Yeah. He, he, his, his grandchildren were um, the apple of his eye. He, both of them, he just, um, there was nothing that made him happy. You know, <laughs> I asked him more than once. Um, it was either, I heard two stories. One was that he and Tom Gehringer were smoking cigarettes somewhere that they weren't supposed to be. <laughs> or he and Russell Becker, I'm not sure. The other one was that when he was playing football, which he, he was very, very proud of his football career, um, that uh, Coach Keeney apparently didn't think he was moving fast enough and uh, was kind of calling him Sparky as a, as a, you know, being sarcastic, and it's, it stuck. So, yeah, and it was perfect. <laughs> he, he was pretty proud of his, his uh, football, his football years. So, and it was kind of funny because Really, Sparky didn't fit very well. <laughs> <laughs> and then Taylor, Taylor, Taylor started calling him Sparkles. Sparkles, yeah. Sparkles. Sparkles. Which was also fitting. Yes. Sparkles fit him better than Sparkles. Yeah, and that's actually his name in my phone. Uh, I yeah, went through and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. Sparkles. <laughs> that's fine. So we were at a Dakota Code show in Dickinson one year, and, um, Kevin and Ed, uh, Kevin and Lindy Tome were living down there, Eddie Tome, and they were high school classmates, and they were on the football team together. And um, I was in my 
Eddie Boo Boo. Eddie wasn't doing really well. Uh, Lindy had brought him to the show so the two of them could visit. And they were at a, a round table, oh, a little ways, like, there was a partition. So it would be over like where Peggy is, or a little further away. But I couldn't see them. And all I heard was this giggle. <laughs> and I heard it for like five hours. <laughs> and people had talked about Mark's giggle before, but I hadn't, I don't know why I was married to him, but I hadn't gotten it yet. <laughs> and all I could hear, that giggle, it was just like, you know, yeah, there was nothing like that giggle. Yep. Nothing. Like that. I, I, yeah, I don't think you can imitate it. It was... And it was so heartfelt, and um, yeah, that's it was. It wasn't hard to find smiley pictures. <coughs> we weren't up here then. I remember a lot. I don't know where we were. Maybe moved away again. Maybe to move to the end. But uh, for when the three younger ones that were in high school up here, much. And I don't know then, was it Mark or you, Laura, that we were in the band and so didn't one of you play the tuba? Yeah, I did. You did. It was, that's what I did. Well, my husband yeah. played the tuba. Yeah, yeah. I played the baritone. Yeah, the years before he was, he, felt, he took first place at a, a Grand Forks mm. uh, musical fair or whatever they used to have when we were in school years and years ago. But I knew what it was. And I remember I came up here and stayed with the folks and all, and the kids were younger, and one Halloween, because uh, we lived with them when the kids were little for a while, when George was up here working on the missile sites. We had come from the Larmer area, he worked there and stuff. So we stayed with mom and dad, and Diane and Mark and Lauren were younger, and only up there and stuff. And they'd run and play, I remember the time, I think Halloween time, because you were all in costume and stuff, and I think I have some pictures of that too. Snickety. I talked to my sister yesterday and she apologized she couldn't be here tonight, but when we were first dating, her snickety came up in a conversation <laughs> and she must have been well, maybe a second grader, Colette, and she had never heard that word. Uh, and Mark was giving her a bad time that she was persnickety. <laughs> and she couldn't even pronounce it, and she had such a blank look on her face. Well, what does that mean? And she kept going on about what this word was, and well, how do you say it again? <laughs> they went back and forth for weeks, <laughs> trying to figure out who could use that word the most. <laughs> And she said, when I talked to her on the phone the other day, she says, first thing she said was, <laughs> She said, I still think of Mark every time I use that word or I hear that word. <laughs> show the video that was made by Gisborne Jeff. So those precious memories will live on in our hearts and our minds forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn. That casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Eternal God, you gave Mark a new birth and the promise of eternal life and baptism, and entrusted him for us a time that seems too short. As we thank you for the life we shared, help us now to release him to your mighty keeping. Bring us all to that day when we shall stand in your presence with all your saints in light eternal. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you and to lay all our cares on you. 
knowing that you care for us. Grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide us from the light of your immortal love, as shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Creator, your Holy Spirit intercedes for us even when we do not know how to pray. Send your Spirit now to comfort us in these, deep, in these days of need and loss, and help us to commend Mark to your merciful care, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. This concludes our service here. You are welcome to stay around and visit as long as you wish.